Welcome everybody, my name is Richard and here at RSEV HQ on the south coast. It's been three years now since we installed solar panels along with some battery storage. So has it been worth it? Has it saved us much money? Should I recommend it to everybody with all these buildings around here? Well, I think so, yes, I think it saved us a lot of money. How long is it gonna take us to pay back the investment on it? Well, those are all questions I'm gonna try and answer in this video. We've been using them every day to charge electric cars, run an office, so in the real world, given UK weather, not just one year, but over the course of three years, exactly how off-grid are we and what does it save us? Well, it is cold out here, so let's go inside, get on the computer, look at my spreadsheet, and I'll tell you. Okay, so this has actually been a surprisingly complicated task, and I've got quite the spreadsheet going on here with lots of numbers. And I even released a video not that long ago, a few weeks ago, uh, but I realized some of the numbers there were wrong, so I had to pull the video down. So if this seems like a bit of a, a kind of repetition, you might have just seen that other video, and then actually that came down. This is another one now. But I need to go through the numbers as best as I can get them, because it's not just been a case of opening an app and it tells me exactly how much we've saved, because the price of electricity per unit has varied massively over the course of the last six, seven years. Uh, obviously, the uh, Ukraine-Russian war had a massive impact on energy prices, and so the cost per unit went up hugely, even more so in the workplace, because although at home there were caps on how much your energy could go up to, uh, it was capped at a maximum rate, that never applied for business. So for business, I mean, at one point, I think we got up to 97 pence per kilowatt hour of energy here. And, that, and that's massive. That's three times the cap at home, basically. And that's why there was a lot on the news about companies even going out of business, energy intensive companies or breweries and places like that struggling even more. You know, we had COVID times, we've got the war. And so it's been very difficult for businesses and energy prices have varied massively. So essentially, I've got a couple of ways of I've been working this out. And the numbers are slightly different, but the best I can do is kind of show you what I've managed to work out so far. Um, but let's just wind it back to the beginning about the solar installation. We've got, uh, I think it was 62 panels in the end. I'll put a little asterisk and number here if I'm incorrect in that. And then we've got two Tesla power walls. We've got panels on two sections of warehouse roof at the back there. So one faces east. There's panels above these offices, which face south. And then there's panels on the western side. So we get a pretty good spread of energy throughout the day. And that's a really good way to have it. If you've just got south facing panels, you get kind of nothing, 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 massive peak, nothing, nothing. So it's nice to have the spread. And one big factor I really want to highlight here is that commercial buildings are fantastic for solar because you've got big, flat, easy to work on roofs. You know, well, it doesn't have to be flat roof, but pitch roof, but big roofs. Whereas a house, you've got, you know, much smaller roofs with chimneys and stuff like that. Putting a load of solar panels on the roof really doesn't take very long. And we can show some clips here of when it was being installed. And it actually went on in a couple of days, no problem at all. So very good to put them on commercial roofs. But how much does it cost? Well, I'll show you. Our system cost us a total of £54,000. But, and listen to these buts, it, of course we can remove the VAT from that. I'm a VAT registered company. So £45,000 plus the VAT is what it costs as an initial investment there. Now you can offset this against your corporation tax liability. Um, so I took advantage of the savings. Now when I did this, corporation tax was 19%, but actually since then it's gone up to 25%. So of our declared profits in the end of the year, the tax man takes 25% of that, but you can go, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. You know, I spent a whole load of money on some solar and therefore, I don't have to pay as much tax, which by the way, if you buy electric cars new in your company, well, you can also make some tax savings, but that's another topic. We've talked about that separately. So actually, if I were to spend the same money on solar now and take then tax savings of 11,250 pounds, it would owe me 33,750 pounds. So if you look at it in terms of how much does it owe you, 33,750 pounds is the number. But how much has it saved? How long will it take to recoup that? Well, firstly, that's what I'm gonna try and answer in this video, but firstly, I don't really look at it like that and never have done. The investment added to the value of the building. So this building was worth more straight away. So if I were to sell this building tomorrow, it's worth more because it has loads of solar and a couple of storage batteries, Tesla power walls, Tesla gateway. And so it would be largely off-grid for somebody. 
we're largely off grid. I'll go for exactly how off grid we've been actually month by month. But for anyone using this this warehouse for lots of you know for lots of uses, you could be entirely off grid. But the energy savings add to the value of the building. So I don't look at it like it has to pay me back. I think it was a good investment that adds to the value. Nonetheless, let's say that it owes me thirty three seven fifty. How long will it take to recoup that investment? Let's go with that line. Before we get down to the numbers, let's talk about how off-grid we are. So with those solar panels and with just a couple of Tesla Powerwall batteries, just to kind of soak up some of the excess bits in between what we do. And of course, we're mainly energy intensive in a day, but this is a business selling electric cars. So of course, we're always charging electric cars. Our own cars, our own fleet of cars that we run to drive for work every day up and down the country, also largely charge off of the energy here when we're in the office, cars plugged in, charges up. At night, we don't use so much. We've got the security systems, fire systems, um, but there's not much energy use at night. So kind of a little bit more opposite to a house. We use it in the day when typically the sun is out. The sun is just going down now, so we'll start kicking onto the batteries. But all that lighting in the warehouse, charging cars, plus office and heating in the office and the lounge here, and computers and stuff like that, all use it. So how off-grid are we? Well. We had this fitted in December 2022. So in 2023, as a whole year, we were off grid 64.3% of the time. Now you've got to bear in mind that from April in 2023, we were 95% off grid and we remained above 90% off grid until August and drop into 82% in September. So the most of the summer, we are just about entirely off grid. That pattern is basically repeated again, March 2024, 72% off grid, right up until September, 88% off grid, so over 90% for most of those months as well, the average 64.5, because in the depths of winter, so November, December, January, we're typically seeing, well, 27%, 20% December, 24% January you know, we need to use, um, that's, how, that's how much off grid we are because there's just short days. I mean, it's not even four o'clock here and it's just about getting dark outside. 2025 was a bit of a sunny year. Anyone in England would tell you that. So our average was 69.5% off grid for 2025. But you can see out of that, typically we are in the upper half of 60% off grid. So between 65 and 70% off grid. Given UK weather, I don't think that's too bad. And given the energy use we have, which is reasonably intensive. So I've got a couple of versions of numbers here and I spent a long time breaking down our monthly bills and statements from Octopus Energy about how much energy we've imported, how much energy we've exported and taken into account the energy unit price at the time. And what I've been keenly trying to work out, and it hasn't really panned out that well because it's massively complicated, is to kind of work out what energy we didn't import. So we know what energy bill was and how much we paid, but the crucial factor is how much did we not import at whatever rate that was at that time, at that month, on that day. And I realized how much energy prices varied over the course of time, especially, you know, by the end of 2022 and into 2023, we were paying in excess of 74 pence per kilowatt hour of unit energy. And then it's come down again more recently. So in fact, the savings more recently have been less because energy is less, but the savings initially were higher because the cost of energy per unit was higher, if that makes sense. Kind of a long story. You can see I've done a big spreadsheet. I don't need to go through all of it, but what I was keenly trying to work out is, okay, we've had to pay for this much. We also then didn't have to pay for this much. So that represents the saving of this. And then we also got some money for what we've exported to the grid. So when we have spare energy, the batteries are full, it goes out to the grid. So I'll round it up now. And basically, I worked out that, roughly speaking, we have a equivalent of what we've not used to 15,500 pounds and then about 2,500 pounds in what we've exported. So it comes up to about 18,000 pounds by those calculations. But they were hugely complicated and the way Octopus charged and, and credited their invoices for the export and the different schemes we were on, then we're on panel power and then the rate change. And there's, there's a lot of variations. It's quite difficult to track. And actually, the last couple of years, the way they did their invoicing is because we've been um, not importing much and actually exporting more in the summer, 
we've had negative invoicing, <laughs> so uh, we don't actually then get charged. So I don't get charged for about four or five months, and then the credit goes on to when I do get charged. So it's all a bit complicated, and hopefully, without going into any more, you can understand that. But I worked out there basically a saving of about eighteen thousand pounds. It was only after all that that I then kind of went. Why don't I just look at how much I've actually spent out the bank? Because those are just kind of per unit savings and not actually what it's cost then with standing rates and that sort of stuff. So I just looked at the bank account in the end and the statements and a profit and loss report. Um, but in the end, I've gone to the bank and said, what has actually gone out to Octopus? And I've collated the results here. I did that for every single month for each year for the last seven years. So I've got a monthly cost and what that costs per year. So summary, 2019. We spent, the first year we had this, this, this particular building, we were somewhere else before, £9,400 on electricity, if I just round up a few pounds. In 2020, we then only spent £6,400. Why is that? COVID. COVID lockdowns. You know, we weren't trading as much, we weren't here as much. So that year, we only spent 6400 2021, 10400 2022, the last year that we didn't have the solar, £12,800. So what I thought then I would do is that the COVID year skews those uses numbers. So let's take a bit of an average in there and let's say that would be £9,500 for that year equivalent if it was more like a normal year. That means our average annual electricity cost average for those four years was £10,520. So now let's take the average of the years since we have had solar, which is now three years. 2023, we spent 2,969 pounds. 2024, 2,081. 2025, we're just under, if, well, in fact, just under 15, uh, 1,500 pounds, 1,545 pounds. There might be a little bit of towel uh, left over for this month, December. So let's just call it 1,600, roughly speaking here. Why is it less this year? Well, it's been a very sunny year, so we've been off grid more, yeah? Uh, and actually, because it's so sunny, it's not just what we didn't import, it's what we exported as well. And we got a little bit better rate for the export, so it's good. Uh, so the average energy price since we've had solar per year is 2,198 pounds. So basically, from those calculations, averaging things out in a more simplistic way, we've been saving, on average, 8,320 pounds per year. That's literally the numbers taken from what's going out to Octopus Energy, simple as that, or a different energy provider we had in earlier days. Now, if we take three years of 8,320, that comes to 24,960 pounds worth of savings, more than the other one. Um, so somewhere between 18,000 and 25,000 pounds has been literally our savings so far. And in a way, although I've tried to work out lots of per unit calculations, because even recently the price per unit at different times of day has changed. The simplistic approach is probably to take what has actually gone out of our business account and paid an energy company. And on average for the last three years, we've been spending 8,320 pounds less on our electricity. So over the last three years, we probably have saved very nearly 25,000 pounds on our energy expenses. Now remember that this owes us equivalent today would be £33,750 after we take those tax savings. Well, we're a very large way to go in towards uh, really paying for it back. In fact, at this rate, really one more year would make that just over 30. So four years, benefit of doubt with some of the calculations, call it five years, we've actually saved enough to pay for what it cost us. Does that make sense? So with that result, I'm very happy. Do I recommend having solar? Yes, absolutely, both on your home, of course, but even more so for businesses, because you've got these big warehouse roofs that are very simple to just get loads of solar panels on. Use what you need to use in the building, export the rest, it adds to the value of the building, it's the right thing to do, and in the long term, saves quite a lot of money and could even be a good money earner. And I would argue that no roof of any warehouse is very pretty at all. So put loads of panels on roofs of warehouses and rather that than all over the fields, to be honest. So um, 
the more the better. Then have more local grid storage, then there's less demand from the grid, everything's much more local, and it just all makes sense, doesn't it? It just all makes sense. You've got to remember now as well, since we did this, solar panels are much cheaper. So this all costs less actually now. I haven't got the equivalent quote today, but I'd imagine it would cost a bit less. So you could be looking at returns easily in four years, five years for sure. So I hope that made some sense. <laughs> I've been looking at this spreadsheet a lot and there's different ways of working it out, but it's, yeah, you get the idea. There's a lot going on there, but the simple fact of the matter is it looks like we're saving over £8,000 per year on our energy and it's a huge saving and I love it. It's great and everyone should have it. That's it from me for now. Thank you very much. See you in another video very soon.